In this video, I'm gonna do a comparison of the N8N agents versus the new make.com AI agent. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how the N8N and make agents work and how they are different. And stick around to the end and I'll tell you which one I like better, let's do it. So for testing, I've been using Telegram as a chat interface to help me generate images or to help me write an email. Just something that I could use to compare the two with two different tools just to see how they work differently. Here is the agent that I built out in N8N N that generates the image and writes the email and responds back to Telegram. And then here is the make.com agent that takes in the message from Telegram and the two different tools to write an email and to generate an image, and then finally to respond back to Telegram. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start in Make because these are the newest to arrive on the market. When you log into Make, you are going to see the AI agents beta right here. If it's not here for you, it should be rolled out soon. Here I already have an existing agent, but you can go ahead and create a new one over here. On the connection here, this is where you're gonna connect it to an AI model, and you can go ahead and add in those credentials here. I already have an existing one. I'm gonna go ahead and use OpenAI for this example and then you give your agent a name and then you're gonna pick a model. I already have an agent built, but you would go ahead and pick a model and then you would go ahead and add in your system prompt. Looks like I forgot to give it a name. And then you can go ahead and save it. Then it takes you to this screen where you can adjust the prompt and then you can add in the different tools. Now, the way they do this is that they allow you to essentially use any of your other scenarios as a tool. So you can start to think of your scenarios as a function, which is pretty cool and they can be reusable. So you can go through your folders, come down here to the folder I created for this video, and then we could go ahead and pick our two different tools. I'm gonna go ahead and add a description here because it says I need one. This tool is for writing emails. So I could add these two tools to my agent. So now we have the system prompt and the tools and some other agent settings here. These were the ones that we put in originally and then you could go ahead and save your agent. Now, I already have a complete agent already built out, and then here are the two different tools that I built out that we just added to the test agent that are also connected up with the existing agent. So the way you do this is you have a traditional trigger. In this case, we have the Telegram bot. I've already set up a connection. It's connected to this Telegram account I have here, the SGP assistant. We can send it messages from the message here, and then that is going to come in through the trigger and then go into the agent. Again, we can open up this agent and take a look. It's gonna look similar to the configuration screen where we have a specific agent that we selected. Here are those system tools, again, that we already added. You're gonna pass in a thread ID. This allows you to keep memory, so we're passing in the chat ID from Telegram. That allows the agent to store the memory from the conversation so that it can remember the context of any conversation. And then you pass in the system instructions. I happen to use the exact same system prompt that I used in N8N and they both work fine, just copied and pasted from one to the other. And then if we scroll down, we have the message that we send into the agent that is coming from the trigger. And then you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to this as well. When you have an agent that runs for more than three minutes, they suggest that you use a webhook. The requests I'm using today are pretty simple, so I have this on no, but if you click to yes, it would allow you to add a webhook. And then instead of responding directly, it would fire off that webhook when you are ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hit cancel and get back to the original state. And then of course, this is the response back to Telegram once the agent has figured everything out. So now if we jump over to the first tool, write an email, we can take a quick look at how this works. The first step of your tool is going to be the action that you want to take. And if we come into the tool itself, as always, you're going to set up your connection to your Gmail, and then you're going to fill in the placeholders as you normally would the thing to keep in mind is, is that the placeholders are not coming from where we are used to seeing, which is in this here. They are coming from over here. And you can see we have these scenario inputs, body, subject, and two. And the way you define those is down here. Right here, you can define the scenario inputs. So you can add these items just like this. Here's how you add a new item. And then you can also define the scenario outputs, the ID, so you can see in the response to the agent here, I'm just responding back with the message ID. 
So you just add your trigger as usual, and then you just add this agent return output. And then it's gonna be very similar to the generate image. We have the open AI generate an image module here, and we're also passing it in the prompt. As you can imagine, that's gonna be set in your scenario inputs down here. And then you can set up your image outputs, which is the image URL, which you can pass directly into the return output of the agent. So if I back out here, and back out of this one here so we can see everything running and then back out of this one as well. We can go ahead and turn on this agent. I'm gonna delete the old data. We can jump over to the SGP assistant. Please write Steven at SGP labs and email about getting together this weekend. So we can go ahead and put that in, jump back to our agent. We can see it's working here. And what we can also see is it's starting to call the specific tools. And as always, you can dig into the specific information that is flowing through the automation and the response. And then if we come back to the actual run here, you can actually come in here and see the actual execution steps and the detailed information about how the agent made its decision. So we can see all of the different execution steps here and all the little details of how it went about everything that it just did. And then you can see it responded back to Telegram, as you might expect. The email has been successfully sent. Now I am creating just drafts here. So if I come over here, we can see we have a draft meeting up this weekend, and then we have the message to myself. And then to use the other tool, we can say create an image of a man riding a bike. We can jump back over to make. We can see that run really fast right there. And of course, again, you can take a look at the response and everything that happened here. And you can see that it flowed through here as well. We can take a look at the actual data. We've got the image here. Everything looks good. And then we can come back to the assistant. We've got that image. If we clicked on it, there's the man on the bike. So overall, pretty straightforward. In typical fashion, we can always monitor the output and debug how everything was calculated as we can with Make all the time. But now let's jump over to N8N and start to compare the two agents. So first and foremost, I think the first thing that you notice here is that everything is quite a bit more visual in the sense that in Make, in order to visualize our agent, we have to see it as different scenarios here. The memory and the model we're using and any of its settings are a bit more hidden and you have to go into the individual settings or you actually have to go into the configuration of the agent in order to get access to those elements or even to see them. Whereas Make, you start to see that your model is right here. If you wanted to change it, you would just disconnect it and add a new model. Your memory is right here as well. If you remember in Make, that was stored within the thread ID here. Whereas in N8N, it's laid out just like this and we can replace this with other tools. And you can see we also have our tools connected right here. One of the nice things about N8N is that a lot of the tools are already available to you and you don't necessarily have to create another scenario. So now there are times where you do, like in this case. So you can see here, if I go into this tool here, this specific tool is actually calling a different workflow. And it feels a bit more like Make, where you have a separate scenario. And you have to do this when you examine the tools along the right hand side and you just can't find the tool that you need. Whereas a lot of the tools are built in, so you don't actually have to build out a complete scenario. So in Make, every single one of your tools is a separate scenario, whereas in N8N, they already have a bunch of tools that can be integrated directly into a single scenario so that you don't have to have all of these separate workflows for each individual tool which can become a pain. Now let's go ahead and just run this one time. Let's test this workflow. Let's jump back to the assistant and say, please create me an image of a man on a bike. All right, let's jump back to N8N. And now we have the scenario running. Now, the other thing that I would mention here as well is that, again, this is much more visual in the sense that we can see the agent running. We can see that it's generating the image. When it's done with the image, we can see that it's now going back to OpenAI to figure out what we should write back to Telegram. And then in this case, I had two different outputs. If it's a file, I actually download it and send it so that we actually get the image here. But the thing to note here is that it's just much more visual and you can see what's going on. Now, you can also come in here and you can see the exact output and how the agent was behaving. 
You can look at the logs and then you can go deeper into the agent and look at the memory. And then you can also look at the prompts that were sent to OpenAI and then all the different steps all along the way, which is great. But I think more than anything, it just shows that using an agent is not just a linear action. And in Make, it does feel a lot more linear, even though you can tell that it's going back and forth and it's doing these different things. You just can't see it as well. And I think that's just because of the way the Make UI is designed. It's always moving from left to right, whereas in N8N, and generally it's moving this way, but automations can come down here and they can come back over here and then they can come down over here and then they can go over there and then you can actually have them loop back again. So the N8N interface in general is more flexible and more visual. So you're really able to see a lot better in terms of what the agent's doing. And believe it or not, that does help a lot when you're designing these and having issues and just trying to understand how the agent is working. If there is a flow that is not going the way you want, sometimes in your automations, your agent is going to use multiple tools together to perform a single action. And if it's doing something in the wrong order and you have to go through your agent here and debug it this way through all of these different action steps and look through all this, this is a lot to look through. Whereas in N8N, just visually, you'd be able to identify the problem because you could see that it's going to this tool and then it goes to this one. And you know that it's supposed to go to this one first and then to that one. And then it's supposed to do this and then that and then come over here and then go out. Just visually, without even debugging it, without going into the log, you would be able to see that. All right, so let's test the other action as well. I'm going to go ahead and test the workflow, come back to our assistant. Please write Stephen at sgplabs.com a message about getting together on the weekend, come back to our agent here again. Notice how we just see it. We can see it thinking. And then this time, because there was no image, it came down this path. Again, I added this little extra here so that if there's an image, we download it and send it as an image post instead of just the URL. And then here we can see we responded and we got the response just like that. So in my honest opinion, I think N8N agents are much more advanced and we've really only scratched the surface of what these can do. They also have different types of agents. They already have MCP agents. So N8N is definitely moving very fast with their agent technology and Make is just starting to get into the game. It'll be interesting to see how Make is able to keep up. Now, if you wanna get access to these different templates here to play around yourself, make sure to jump into the No Code Architects community. You'll find those in the automation vault. You'll also find our other N8N templates and our Make templates. There's a business clarity course and calls with me almost every single day. Plus it's an engaged group of people. You can get tech support. We guarantee to solve 100% of our members' tech issues. And we also have an upcoming in-person mastermind. It'd be great to see you there. So I'd love to see you inside the community. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.